One of the most important things I do to any camera I own is customize the buttons. This allows me to work faster on a shoot because I can access different settings and menu items way quicker than the stock settings allow for. It also allows me to tailor the camera to my particular shooting style and the type of content I'm filming. I'm a wedding filmmaker and here are the custom settings I've assigned to the buttons on my Canon C70 and R6. On the C70, there are 13 assignable buttons and I have assigned almost all of them. The C70 has three zones of buttons. You've got the left side with six buttons, the right side on the hand grip with four buttons, and underneath the lens mount are two more. There is one more button behind the LCD screen, but this button is so inconvenient to reach that I don't even use it. The first zone I reserve for all the stuff that I don't need access to as often. Because I need to move my hand away from the lens to be able to press those buttons, I don't wanna put any buttons there that I may need to press while I'm filming a clip. Buttons one and two I've actually kept at their defaults, which are one, to switch between white balance modes, and two, to set a custom white balance or to adjust the Kelvin temperature. I regularly switch between custom custom white balance mode and Kelvin mode with button one, and button two lets me set a custom white balance or quickly change my Kelvin temperature on the fly. Buttons three and five are actually really similar in function. Button five I kept at its default, which is set to toggle on and off my on-screen menus. And button three I used to toggle on and off my HDMI clean feed. Generally, I will have my monitor set up as a mirror of my LCD display, but every once in a while, I want to have a clean feed so I'm not distracted by all the menus. Having button three toggle that clean feed setting on and off is super useful, and I do actually prefer having that clean feed toggle in addition to button five, because when I turn on the clean feed, I still have all those menus available on the LCD if I need to see them. Button four is one of my two autofocus toggle buttons. I use this one to disable autofocus when I'm flying the C70 on a gimbal. The R6 has a handy little touchscreen button for disabling autofocus, but unfortunately the C70 does not. So I needed something on the left-hand side of the camera to be able to do that. I chose button four in particular because it has this little lip underneath that makes it really easy to find when I'm not looking at the camera. I use button six as a shortcut to pull up the frame rate selection menu so that I can quickly switch between 24 and 60 frames per second. Over on the right side of the camera, we've got all my most used buttons. Because they're all located on the hand grip, they're super easy to press without having to think about where the button is. And I can press most of them while I'm filming a clip because there's no risk of shaking the camera from moving my hand around. Buttons seven and eight are my exposure tools. Button seven toggles zebras and eight toggles false color. I use zebras all of the time for checking skin tone exposure, so I like to have it right where my thumb rests. I'm also using false color quite often to make sure my scene is properly exposed. Light is always changing at weddings, so I'm constantly checking both zebras and false color to make tweaks. Button nine is the final button in the exposure trio. This is my waveform button. I don't use the waveform quite as much as zebras or false color, so I put it on button nine, which is a little more out of the way. Button 10 is my second autofocus button, and I actually use it way more than button four. Because it's right next to the record button, it's super easy to hit with my pointer finger, so it's perfect for quickly disabling autofocus while I'm filming handheld. The C70 doesn't have amazing autofocus, so I use it as an autofocus kill switch. That way, once the camera acquires focus, I can turn off the autofocus and just make subtle tweaks manually if I need to. Down at the bottom of the camera, we've got our final two buttons. These ones are also pretty easy to hit while I'm recording since they're right next to my left hand when I'm holding onto the lens. Button 11 is used for peaking. Having it set to button 11 makes it super easy to hit with my pinky finger while gripping the lens. So I can pretty quickly and easily turn on peaking even when I'm filming a clip. And finally, button 12. I have this map to switch my autofocus between face priority and face only mode. If I'm filming a fairly stationary person, I'll often switch over to face only mode so that if that person exits the frame or someone walks in front of me, the autofocus doesn't start hunting. The R6 is unfortunately a bit lacking when it comes to button customization. You can't customize nearly as many of the buttons and there's less options for customization on the buttons that are available. On the C70, you can customize almost every button there the R6 only lets you customize six of the 15 buttons. The most important things for me were having a button to quickly disable the autofocus when I'm handheld and having a button to toggle on and off zebras. And a side note, on the R6, you can actually change what the buttons do depending on what shooting mode you're in. So you can have your custom buttons do one thing in video mode and something completely different in photo mode. The first button I changed was the multi-function button just above the shutter button. I set this to toggle on and off my autofocus just like I have set up on my C70. Luckily, the button is even in a very similar place to button 10 on the C70, which is super nice for my muscle memory. <laughs> 
The AF on button is very conveniently located right where my thumb rests when holding the camera. So I set this to toggle on and off the zebras, again, just like how I have my C70 set up. I also changed this button on the front of the camera to toggle the peaking setting. That way, if I flip the lens into manual focus mode, I can quickly turn on peaking to help with focusing. Unfortunately, the R6 does not let you use peaking when the lens is set to autofocus, even if you have the autofocus paused. So in order to use peaking, you do need to switch the lens into manual focus mode. Because of that, I don't really end up using peaking that often, which is why I assigned it to the hardest to reach button. The R6 also allows you to customize what the dials do, which is very handy. And I changed the rear dial to adjust my color temperature. This way I have a super fast option to adjust my Kelvin temperature without needing to dive into the menu. The final two buttons I changed were these two. I set the star button as a way to change ISO. Usually I'll have Canon's control ring adapter on the camera and I use the control ring to adjust ISO. But occasionally I'll use an ND filter adapter instead, which doesn't have that control ring. So for those circumstances, I needed to have a quick way to adjust ISO. And this button I have set to switch between different focus modes. Ideally, one of these buttons would have been set up to open the frame rate selection menu, just like how I have on the C70, but the R6 doesn't have that as an option. So, nah. Going along with custom buttons are custom menus. Every Canon camera I've used has had this feature, which basically allows you to take settings from all over the menu and compile them into one super convenient menu. For me, that's taking all my most used settings that I don't have mapped to a button and putting them together for super quick access. On my C70, I've got things like shutter mode, digital IS, grid markers, aspect markers, formatting cards, all things that I need to access on a regular basis, but I'm not necessarily using multiple times throughout a day. Having all these settings in one menu is super helpful, and the vast majority of the time, I never even have to leave the custom menu. Everything I need is right there. My custom buttons have been changing fairly regularly. I'm always trying to find the best setup for my personal shooting style, so I'm sure I'll end up tweaking these again at some point. But for now, this is what they are. Hopefully, this video helped you come up with a few custom buttons for your own camera. I'm sure not all of my custom buttons will apply to you or your setup, but hopefully this has given you a few ideas to implement into your own shooting style. Okay, bye.